Hey, have you ever asked the question, what would it take for me to develop a side hustle or go into a business for myself? Is that crazy? Or is it even something I should uh, attempt? Can I take my skills and do something further with them? Well, we're going to try and answer that for you today with the help of my very special guest. Anybody remember back to a time when you could take a shop class in school? My high school had a department called industrial arts, and you could learn automotive skills and metal and woodworking and photography, electrical, leather carving, mechanical drafting, jewelry making, home economics, and so on. We learned things that became useful, lifelong skills. Today, not so much. The teachers and classes have disappeared from being a part of the school day and eventually from importance to today's generations. Kids are being taught that a college education is paramount and you should get one even if the cost of it puts you into debt for 10 to 20 years. Have the skilled trades been rejected by the kids and young adults of today and, and have been replaced with uh, career thoughts of video game creation and computer programming only? Maybe. Well, that's not good, at least in my opinion. And to fix it, all of us should really pay attention to the next several minutes of this podcast because these things affect your life, the well-being of your companies, communities, and families. One of my favorite radio personalities, Dave Ramsey, tongue-in-cheek often speaks of such college degrees as German polka history, implying that there are virtually no jobs to go along with those degrees. He's right. Debt stacks up, and for what purpose? Another of my favorite uh, radio TV podcast guys is Mike Rowe, the star of the old and the new Dirty Jobs uh, a TV show and the voice of shows like Deadliest Catch. Mike is a big proponent on the value of the skilled trades. In fact, he puts his money where his mouth is with the Mike Rowe Foundation. He offers training scholarships for blue collar jobs like welding to automotive to you name it. This year, he's awarding over $1 million in scholarships to, wait for it, trade schools. A kid can learn an extremely well-paying skill in a short amount of time. No college debt. Never get laid off. Mike's biggest challenge is finding students willing to get their hands dirty and put in an honest day of hard work. And there's the reason for this explanation of mine has everything to do with why I'm, I'm so excited to have on the show today, Tim Carter. For many years, Tim had the call-in radio show, Ask the Builder. And this has everything to do with you. And here's why. People, homeowners, would call Tim and ask him how to do certain remodeling tasks and jobs around the house. Why did they call Tim? because they failed to learn those skills earlier in their own lives, such as in school. There's a market out there for installing those improvements, repairing broken irrigation systems, mending fences, generally creating and completing for pay those projects wanted by people unskilled in the physical trades. And I asked him if he might speak about the demand and the markets and the types of projects homeowners have asked him about or, or asked him to perform for them. And it seems like almost every guy I know in the trades has either thought about doing side work or is doing side work or is thinking about starting a business for himself. And Tim is just the guy who can shed some light on this. Hey, everybody, Coach Gary here. Thanks for indulging me in my rant. Fortunately, I have a guest today you've just got to meet, and I believe he can help guide us through the problems mentioned in that rant and talk about some solutions. Tim grew up with the trades, was a master plumber, a general contractor, specialized in ultra custom remodeling. He flipped houses before flip this house was even cool. He knows an awful lot about the market. Many would-be handymen or contractors are considering now, enough on my part. Let me help me welcome Tim Carter, Mr. Ask the Builder to the Brick and Block podcast. Hi, Tim. How in the heck are you doing out there? Gary, it's a pleasure to be on the podcast. I'm doing fantastic. I thought you might be. I thought you might, you might be. We just have a short time together today, so I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, so if it's, if it's okay, I'm just going to ask you some questions and things that I'm, I'm pretty sure the listeners might have on their minds. Okay. Absolutely. Fire away. All right, bud. 
Okay, first question. So doing your call-in show for as long as you did, what kinds of questions did people have about their various projects around the house needing help or, or info on how to do them? That's a really great question. I actually, what before I started my radio show, which happened in actually March of 1994, I had started my syndicated newspaper column, Ask the Builder, in October of 93. And uh, I was able to syndicate my column in a very short time into quite a few papers. But I really had a lot of fun on the radio show and did it for 12 years. I think the biggest thing I loved about the show, as crazy as it sounded, was running the board. I did the board myself. <laughs> So, you know, I'm a, I'm a ham radio operator too. So I think that's why. Anyway, the questions that I would get, it, it, there is as plentiful and as varied as snowflakes that fall out of the sky. Uh, in other words, it could be a roof leak. It could be my toilet continues to flush. Uh, I've got water coming into my basement. My concrete's spalling. Um, you know, what's the best exterior paint? Um, whatever. But, but what happened over time, this is the really thing that I think your listeners need to understand, is that to your point, most of these people, they don't have the skill set themselves, even to do minor repairs around their home. And it's getting worse. If, if, the, if my incoming email each week is any indicator. So this means that there is an enormous demand right now for people who, who, who there, there's this demand for basically just super handyman is what I call it, a super handyman, not, not somebody true. who can only do five things, but somebody who might be able to do 20 things. And I can tell you that if I had to go back into business right now, if I, if I stopped doing what I was doing or whatever, I would never ever build another room addition. I would not remodel another kitchen. I would just do jobs that lasted no more than two days. There's so much money in it. Wow. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great answer. Son of a gun. Uh, with respect, respect to the, the thoughts that some of our guys have about ultimately going out on their own, did you get the sense uh, when you were talking with the call, with the callers that, that people are looking for for skilled and reasonable help with the projects? Well, I guess that you just answered that pretty well. So well, people well, yeah, were always looking for help. Yeah, yeah. For anybody that has the fear that they of going out on their own, I can understand that. But uh, there is so much satisfaction in in doing a job right. But what's even more what I got much more pleasure out of, as crazy as it sounds was the satisfaction from the customer. I mean, it was almost, um, I mean, I've never done drugs, but I'm just, it, it just filled me with euphoria where they were so thankful and it was beyond the money. It was just that they were so happy to get the job done. So, so if you're looking for personal inner satisfaction, go out there and really start working one-on-one -on -one with some of these homeowners because your listeners to the, your podcast, they might be insulated. They might be uh, a, a, some, a mason or somebody that's working mm -hmm. for a big crew and they never get to talk to the building owner. Well, wait till you get to talk to a homeowner where you just tuck pointed their chimney and they're super thankful. And some of these old ladies, they're even going to hug you and start crying. So that, that, I'm telling you, it's, it's a completely different world. I've had uh, uh, calls before. Uh, among the things I did, I had a, a small tractor service, and I worked primarily for homeowners. Um, and I've, I, it, was, it was so strange. I have had people tell me that I was an answer to prayer. I mean, that was, that exactly. was amazing. Exactly. No. And all is. I did was bring them a, a load of free dirt. I know, <laughs> so. but, the, but it's getting worse out there. It's getting worse. So the marketplace is screaming for honest people who are willing to do a job for a fair price. If you, and, and when I say a fair price, I'm talking 50, 60, $70 an hour. People yeah. will gladly pay that. Okay. Outstanding. Um, you know, we, when we were talking a few days ago, 
we also talked about how this same idea would apply to an existing contractor, uh, let's say the masonry contractor, uh, uh, who's doing residential and commercial stuff now. But a, a guy who might be considering maybe setting up a crew or a small force of some kind to, to pursue that, that tiny work, I'll say, uh, you know, the two man, uh, handyman sort of a crew, and, you know, and, and to set it up properly with, with insurance and licensing. What do you think about uh, contractors considering delving into the smaller work? It, it, not only is it a good idea, it's, a, it's an amazing idea. Each week, I get emails from homeowners all across the United States, and they say that the common thread is, I cannot find anyone who wants to do this small job. And, uh, you know, a small job might be an hour long. It could be five hours long. It could be two days long. So your podcast listeners who already own a, a masonry company, uh, they've got nothing to lose. They've already got the workers. They've yeah. already got the equipment. They've got everything they need. They're just not advertising that they do small work. So I can guarantee you if they, if they, if they just bought a couple of affordable ads on a local radio station that's targeted to older people, like maybe an oldie station, you know, that's what I would do, like an oldie <laughs> station. I'm serious. Sure. That's the marketplace. You're, you're after these people that are 60 years plus in age. And I'm here to tell you their, their phone's going to start ringing. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, hey, changing direction slightly, um, you strongly support the idea of being involved at the, the local school board level, going to meetings and, and advocating vocational training, that sort of thing. Can you give me some of your thoughts on that? Absolutely. I would, this, let's, let's assume that your listeners, uh, maybe there's some 30 year old guys, 40 year old guys, they continue, they want to go and be in business for another 20 years, 30 years. Mm -hmm. So this is a rhetorical question to them. Mm -hmm. Where in the world do you think you're going to find your employees? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, they're out there, but guess what? They don't know anything about that you exist. They think that brick and block magically fall into a wall. All right. <laughs> well, guess what? They don't. I know that. I've laid thousands of each. All right. So you and your Friends and your neighbors, you have to get active in the school board meetings. You have to pound them and you have to make them bring back vocational education. It's that simple because it's just like anything else in, in the world. It, it, think about how your normal buying habits. If you own a company and you don't get any complaints, you think everything's okay. You think everybody's happy. Well, if the school board gets no complaints from local citizens, about the lack of vocational training, then they think, well, people must not want vocational training because no one comes here each month and complains about it. It's that simple. Yeah, in fact, there was a there was a, a an article. I didn't see it. I heard a couple of guys on the radio talking about it. Article in the uh, Wall Street Journal just like a day ago, two days ago, talking about the idea of the. <laughs> the lack of value of, of some college degrees to majors, uh, you know, towards making a buck. And, and, right. and it's, it's horrible. It's laughable. And you and don't, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a, a film degree. And then you end up working for $30,000 a year in a Seven Eleven. because you can go take a 13 week course right now. I know that you kind of touched yeah. on this in your monologue, but my son took a 13 week course in JavaScript. He got yeah. hired the next day. He started making $120,000 a year, and he's now making $150,000. All right. So, but guess what? You do not need a college degree to take that course. That's in other right. words, you can go online right now, sign up, and you could, you don't even necessarily have to have a high school degree. So, so um, you can make a lot of money without going to college. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I don't think college today is, is at all what it was like when I went but I, I would not recommend sending anyone to college. I can appreciate that. I was thinking also, as, as you were talking about where we're going to find the future uh, uh, workers and that sort of thing, I thought about the last year and a half with the COVID crap that was going on. And then we, 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 we found out that our, our supply 
uh, chain was so messed up, even with respect to prescription medicines. We've just let it all go overseas. Right, right. And, and that's, that, that's that. yeah, and that, yeah. And, but it's another one of those things where you're like what you were saying. Well, if nobody's concerned about it, you know, it must be okay. And, yeah, you know, we, yeah, right. we have to you wake got, up. Everybody's got to complain. They have to be valid complaints, but yeah. you need to start complaining. So, okay. all right. Now, before I let you go, Okay, you got to tell us about that other hat that you wear, the hat of the alchemist. <laughs> Is that pretty far removed from being a builder, Tim? But many of us could, could probably benefit from knowing about that. Maybe just your product, uh, what it, what it does for people, regular folks, and maybe even hey, maybe there's an application for builders. I don't know. But take a moment now, tell us about it. What what makes it unique? How'd you get into it? You know. Yeah, well, no, no problem. So I, I've, I've got a lot of, um, I've got a lot of irons in the fire. I, I've, I've learned over the years that you need to have what we call multiple pillars of income, in case something goes wrong with, 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 with one of the things you're doing. So I, um, I developed a lot of electronic products. Uh, I also own this company that makes the the best uh, certified organic oxygen bleach in the United States. It's a multi-purpose cleaner. It's called Stain Solver. So stainsolver.com. Um, and, and as far as the alchemy, where that comes from, I, I call myself an internet alchemist because in, in, the, in the world of Ask the Builder, these people send me their problems. They email me their problems. Um, they're a mess. The, you know, but I transform their problem into a solution for them that for them is worth more than gold because they're desperate to get help. Uh, they wanna know how things are done the right way. And, and I, that was the biggest reason I started Ask the Builder was because uh, I did not wanna take all of my accumulated knowledge to the grave with me. And there are just many, many things about how, we, how builders of old used to build things and, and they're getting lost. Now I'll give you an example of one that should resonate with your listeners. And actually if, there, if a couple of the guys uh, that, that are your, listeners, they might not even know about this. They might not know about cement paint. So I was really lucky when I was early in my 20s to be able to be trained by an old mason. And in Cincinnati, Ohio, we have a lot of exterior staircases that are poured concrete, but they were stuccoed with a sand cement stucco and they're just beautiful. They had these side walls. I've got lots of photos of them. Well, I always wondered like how in the world did they put that stucco on the fresh concrete and it never peel off? Because I can take you to places in Cincinnati right now where these steps are a hundred years old and they're dirty, but they, other than that, they look like the day they were put in. Well, the trick is these Masons told me, well, first of all, they said we would never pour a set of steps on a Friday because we would never leave that much time between the time we poured it and the time it was stuccoed. But in every single case, once this concrete had set up, we would mix up cement paint, which is just pure Portland cement and water to the consistency of latex paint. They would brush it on the damp concrete, and then they would immediately cover over it with the cement stucco. And I'm telling you, when you do that, the stucco will not come off. It's that simple. But there's like a little trick that maybe half of your your listeners, they go, I've never even heard of that before. Yeah. With those kind of tricks, we can't let those things die. So your listeners need to get their own little blog. They can do it for free at blogger.com, whatever they can do. They need to start writing down or shooting videos with their smartphones and putting them up on YouTube to share some of the secrets that, that they use each day. Yeah. And kind of to your point, there's a number of, of chapters uh, from the Mason Contractors Association of America um, and they have, they're, they're almost all is somewhat involved with, with training, uh, um, apprenticeship, a mentorship, and that sort of a thing. And, um, and that's one of the, one of the, the requirements, I guess I'd say, for the instructors that they like to use, there's, they're going to be guys that have some experience and they're sharing that knowledge with, you know, with kids coming up. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so your listeners, I encourage them, please start taking a few minutes each day. Please take some great photographs of unique situations. Please put them up on the internet. 
please put them up on YouTube. And if you don't know how to make video, no problem. Just take a bunch of photographs and you can put the photographs together. They'll make a video and then just talk about it. I mean, just, just share that knowledge because you're just going to help other people in the future. Simple as that. There we go. Could maybe even throw them up on uh, our, our humble website here for this podcast. Well, Tim, you are a man of uh, much uh, wisdom, <laughs> young young fellow that you are. Uh, and so, as as we wrap this up, though, seriously, I want to I want to thank you for making yourself available today. This was really cool. Um, and also, I want to thank you for what you're doing to help out the the construction industry. Um, I'm going to have some of your contact information available for uh, for folks in the show notes. Um, anything that would be would be beneficial to them. And, um, you know, if you have newsletters or just you want people to go to a website, let me know and I'll put that in the show notes appropriately. And then if you're willing to this, this was a hoot. Uh, maybe you could have you come back uh, at some at some future time. And you could wax eloquently on some of these, uh, these uh, related subjects because it would be fabulous. Sure, I'd, I'd love to do that. Yeah, I, I would encourage your listeners. Uh, one of the things I still love doing is my weekly newsletter. It's free. I urge them to jump on my newsletter because if they're thinking about maybe doing something like that in the future, they just might want to see how I do my newsletter. Heck and yeah. the, the format of the newsletter is just like I'm talking to you over the fence. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not this lecture. It's just a simple conversation. Like, for example, the newsletter that's coming out on Sunday I shared with people that I love doing old fashioned multiplication and division longhand yeah. using a pencil and paper. I don't use a calculator, but I do that on purpose to try to keep my brain yeah. sharp. And so this big tropical storm just blew over my home and, and a lot of rain fell out of the sky. So I wanted to, I wanted to calculate how much rain and how much did it, how much does it weigh? How much does the rain weigh that fell out of the sky on a square mile and you would be blown away. I mean, it's just like, it. I can't even believe it stays up in the sky. There's so much. <laughs> so what I tell you what, I'll put, I'll put the, uh, the letter, the newsletter address yeah, in the show notes as well, but go, to, but, but go ahead, go ahead and give us that. that yeah. Uh, just right go now. to ask, just go to ask the builder.com ask the builder.com it's right there on the homepage. just sign up right there and, and find find it there okay all right cool um thanks again tim this is uh, this has been dynamite okay team that's it for today big favor of you i want you to, to be sure and subscribe to the podcast follow us or like us and to get that brochure uh you know just get a hold of me. We'll get a hold of Tim. We'll make this all happen. You can catch me at brick and block podcast at gmail.com. That's brick and a N D block podcast at Gmail. Uh, Same thing goes for all of you listening around the country. Tell us what you're doing, what your challenges are and your interests are. Send us your photos. (laughs) Maybe we can post some of those on the, uh, the podcast website and we can talk about that on a future podcast with me. So this is important, as Tim was saying. It's important stuff. So tell us about what's going on. Uh, thanks again to Tim Carter and to all of you out there in the industry. Now, for the Brick and Block podcast, I'm Coach Gary. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. <laughs>